Alright guys, thank you for coming to my channel. Um, I'm starting a video series. Um, well, it'll probably be a three-parter. It might be even a four-part series. Um, I've had some water pro uh, pump problems and I'm going to take you guys through some of the troubleshooting uh, steps I've done to fix the water pump along with the tour of my water pump systems. And um, at the end of the series, I will be talking about my floor, open floor heating system also. Alright, we got it out. Um, the case that this is in is 3D printed. Please don't make fun of my pajamas. Well, you can if you want, but I don't really care. Either way. Um, this 3D printed box of the PWM sits in here. The fan's tied into the PWM, so it actually gets a little bit of cooling on it while it's shoved underneath. But, okay, so let's get this apart. Sucks, I'm gonna lose my adjustment too. Oh well, I'll do with it later. Um, okay, yeah, so this kind of slides out and up. No, I'm not gonna get easy. Um, crud, where's all my tools at? Um, I guess as you guys can tell, if you guys don't know me, I. I diddle and battle and electronics and other things that's what this whole bench is for um actually have a lot of fun doing it hmm. and pop that out pull that out have to lose all my nice lovely hot glue that's holding everything in place but this has been a kind of a fidgety problem for today Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'm actually looking for bad solder joints. There's actually a couple almost bad ones right there. And where do they go to? They go to a capacitor, so I don't think they're my problem. More likely, because this solder joint over here looks good. I thought maybe it had something to do with that being the problem. I'm going to go ahead and trim this wire here. It's probably nothing, but you never know. I'm gonna mess with these things. A little short. It's the same as a big short. It just heats up the wire, but if the wire holds it, it'll still give you issues. Um, wire well, looks good. It's this joint right here that I've been having problems with. I'm gonna go ahead and probably. I'm gonna kind of desolder those and just do a straight wire solder. I don't like doing that though. Especially whenever I have these things. Um, these right here are really handy for screen in. However, I've been having a problem with this ground right here getting good connection and it's actually been killing it. So I'm going to probably just go ahead and go over the solder joints. I don't really see anything physically wrong with it, but probably there's something there. So I'm going to hit it with the soldering iron and uh, see if that fixes the problem. I'm also going to pull out the fuse here. Um, the fuse, if this fuse is still good. Which it might be? I don't know. I don't know. Let's pull that out. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but the sun's behind me, so I'm gonna just put it over here so you can see it. The fuse is still good. What I'm looking for on here is any burnt component. So if there's a burnt component or a slightly hot component with a little uh, um, bluing around the component leads, which the component is this thing right here. So that one's a little dirty, but I think it's because I cleaned it with the paper towel one time. But uh, if the resistor there is a little bit blued on either ends or dark, usually these things will tell you. I mean, not all the time, but usually you can find out by looking at that. But the LED was slightly lit, which said it just wasn't get a good connection. Yeah, because the solder joint looks great, actually. I re-soldered this a while back. And it's not loose. I'm not looking at it. It's not moving any. Usually if it moves and it looks good, it's a bad connection. Usually you have, you know, bad connections and shorts and, you know, a bad connection is also known as open. There's really not too much. Sometimes you can do a partial connection, um, but most of it's shorts and opens on most electronics. Um, yeah, I don't really see anything. There's a, a questionable joint right here, but... Same thing on these two down here, but this looks like they got too much solder on it. Um, 
so a two inch solder joint and there's several videos on YouTube for this but uh so if you so I'm gonna just touch these up And of course, I mess with you. See, I do this without getting burned. Sorry for the mumbling. It's just one of those things that happens when you're working on stuff. By the way, um, make sure you have the power turned off anytime you do with any sort of electrical. Um, and be smart enough not to um, hurt yourself. If you can't, it's kind of your own fault. I've... Okay, so when I was a kid once, my cousin, I was at my cousin's house, and he lives in a small town south of uh, the town I grew up in, and I used to hang out with him all the time, and so we go on walks, hang out, you know, whatever kids do at that age, and we went down a block or two, and there's this fence there. And we walked by and we walked back and it's like, is that a hot fence? You know, this is back in the 80s, uh, 90s area, you know, there's no internet. We're all idiots back then. You know, when we were kids, we're idiots anyhow, too. But anyhow, <clears throat> I walked up to it and it's like, do you think it's on? And I don't know. I don't think it is. I haven't seen anything. He's looking at it. He's, he's, I know he's smiling inward whenever he said that. Um, and he said, oh, no, no, it's okay. It's not done. Well, his plan was to uh, have his brother grab hold of me, and he was going to grab hold of his brother, and he's going to grab the fence, and the last one in that pole usually gets shocked. Well, it didn't go that way, because I was like, oh, well, it's not on. So I reach out and grab the thing. I grab a hot wire fence thinking it's not on. Oh, my God, that was a big shock. And it hurt really bad. So, lesson learned, don't grab hot wire fences unless you know they're off. And even that, they probably shock you. Anyhow, they all cracked up laughing at me. It's like, I didn't expect you to grab it. I was going to grab a hold of Andy there. And and uh, he was going to grab hold of you. And he was going to give you a shock together. Group effort. But, you know, when he's kids, stuff like that. Still funny though. Uh, sharp on me. There's actually. Oh, me. I think I can remove those. That's good. Okay, let's uh, flip on the power. Power is on. Mm, crap. Darn. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Both these are engaged. This is engaged. What's going on? Okay, so what we're having is still no power, and the this is on, so it should be engaging. Why don't we have power? All right. All right. Let's see, ground negative, ground negative. So where's my ground? I need my ground, which should be right here on this device. Should be ground. That should be hot. So I got power coming in. I got power going out. I have ground there, so I'm sure it's here. Got power coming in. I get power. oh no. Okay, so this right now is the fuse. Is uh, it's it's a good fuse. Well, we can double check. So, if you need to know how a fuse is done, you get an ohm meter or a voltage multimeter. You come down here to the little diode 
thing there and the little noise maker and this will tell you if you have connection across the wire so how you check it and make sure your meter is working right you actually touch the ends together until it beeps um, I'm going to touch it across the fuse and touch it to this side oh look at that so the fuse looks like it's good let's see if I can get it good okay so I'm touching both sides and the fuse is not it's still moving so the fuse is blown it looks good and this is why you check everything anyhow you know regardless of what's going on you go ahead and do a check on your fuses with a multimeter I'm guessing that one can't handle the vibrations and that's why I was having a little finicky problems with it and why it doesn't look solidly broken it probably just can't handle the vibrations alright now it's working That shut off. So here is the system. There's the PWM control. Oh crap, stuff's falling off now. Um, let's turn down the speed. Anyhow, what it allows you to do is adjust the speed. Oh, well you hit and what it does is allow you to adjust the speed of the motor so it doesn't pull as much surge first thing off for one. For two, I might not be right on that, but it seems to not pull as much surge first thing off. It also allows the motor to run cooler. It may have to run longer, but it'll run longer at less power. Um, it also makes it quieter. It's what I use. Uh